Okay. We got to follow up to our uh, Super Bowl thing. He found out that people. Oh, he got the answer. Yeah. <laughs> they don't get paid. Yeah. My, my when I get home, my wife's like, "They don't get paid." I'm like, "Fuck." <laughs> Welcome back to BSN with BNS, Brandon, and Sal. This is uh, episode two. We we made it. So, um, how you doing today? Good, man. Good. Doing uh, doing much better. We're we're doing this episode in the late afternoon. Last time was morning. I was still uh, getting my uh, ducks in a row, but we're here now. That's it. So, uh, I guess picking up from last episode, we we did fact check the. Uh, the Super Bowl thing, so um, they do not get paid. So thank you, Billy, for looking into that and uh, and confirming that. I was that. wrong, but um, <laughs> they don't get paid. But interesting opportunity. So I guess on that, real quick, before we dive into this week's episode, if you were presented that opportunity to not get paid but perform at the Super Bowl, would you do it? Um, me, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've never done that before so I, I don't know if she she's done Super Bowl half times before so there's got to be some I mean nothing's free she like you said you, I'm sure yeah I'm sure her expenses and stuff yeah. were covered and publicity would have you yeah it's a cool opportunity I, I would do it yeah but, interesting all right cool well so getting I, into I, I lost that first trivia so thanks Billy <laughs> One now you burning. gotta give us another trivia in this uh this episode getting into the first um episode here, right, second episode here, but first topic on this episode, um, we were talking about how we want to kind of bring value and talk business and a little bit of bullshit in here as well. And, and, um, just kind of talk some real current events and things that are going on. Yeah. Um, so with this episode, uh, we wanted to kind of dive in and, and start with like, what is the number one reason that businesses fail? Because I mean, the reality is, I don't know what the statistic is. Maybe this will be our second fact check, but I think it's like nine out of 10 small businesses or startups fail or something. It's like a staggering number. And so, um, let's talk a little bit about, you know, maybe why some reasons we think and, and some of those key points of maybe things that people could look out for and, and keep an extra eye on to avoid failure. Yeah. I mean, so for me, it's a couple of things, you know, having seen the growth of, you know, my own company and, you know, now I'm getting visibility into others. Uh, number one would just be, you know, management ownership, you know, what's, what's the leadership like? Mm -hmm. Because if, if your people aren't bought into what you're doing, never going to work. Um, number two, I would say is, you know, the obvious cash flow. Some people, I'm dealing with it right now. You know, somebody that I'm working with, they they did not anticipate the cash flow that that was needed to operate in in our industry, and uh, becomes difficult. You know, and I would say the third one is uh, just organization, staying staying on top of you know what needs to be done for the business, put in put in the business first. If you're doing those three things, I think. Uh, you'll be okay, but easier said than done. It is. It's it's um it's tricky, and those three in particular, I feel like, are the three that are very very easy for people to let slip and for people to easily put under the radar because they're so focused on like products and services and you know those types of things. Maybe the big ticket, you know, contracts or whatever it might be. And at the end of the day, um, those don't always, you know. They might be a good micro win short term thing, but they're not like you said, they're they'll sneak up under you and then you'll get caught up in in not having the cash flow to yeah. make payroll or pay your bills or whatever, which can cause, you know, some serious problems. And in addition to that, like you said, the the management or ownership side of it. And there's a lot that that goes into it that is, you know, easy to to slip. Um it's funny you brought up cash flows earlier on. Uh, I think we mentioned him last episode, but Grant Cardone. Do you watch any of his stuff or? Yeah. So, I, I mean, in passing, not, you know, I'm not staying up at night watching his yeah, stuff. Yeah. I, I see it on Instagram and what have you. He's all over. And his like biggest saying is, is cash flow is king. But I just pulled these books off my shelf. Um, wanted to give a, a quick plug, but maybe we'll put in the description like a, a link to uh, Amazon where you can purchase some of his books. His stuff is good. He's um, definitely got a very 
strong presence on yeah. uh, on the internet and the way he talks and stuff. But um, he does. He says cash flow is king. He wears a shirt that says cash flow is king all the time. And at the end of the day, you know, it is. Uh, it's one of those three things that we put up there is like what's really important for a business um, to survive. But um, and then the other thing he's got to is, is be obsessed or be average. This book is phenomenal. I, I'm not a reader. I don't I don't read, never liked yeah. reading, but um, actually picked that book up during the pandemic and read the full thing cover to cover. And it was like, kept my attention all the way through. And um, it's interesting, but I think it's another good point almost to the same topic of, of be obsessed or be average that like you do have to have some kind of obsession and, and love and passion for what you do, because I feel like that could be another reason that a business might fail is if that passion and, and that love for it is just not there. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean kind of uh yeah it's so crazy because yeah you know, I, I i'm standing up a new division in in inside of our uh our uh four walls and i'm i'm back to like interviewing people and we're gonna cover that later on but <clears throat> when you talk about obsession and just like drive you know even even not having your own business you know being an, an employee being a 1099 being a contractor, what have you, if you're not obsessed with getting up every day and just trying to make it happen, it's like, I, I I don't live in that world. I don't understand it. Um, but yeah, I, you know, just get reminded of it. I'm, I'm interviewing people and it's like, you know, speaking to grown men, grown women that, you know, your whole life, you think adults, they've got it figured out. And then you arrive to, your your middle age, your young adult years, and you figure out nobody's most people don't have it figured out. So, um, just wanted to share that. But I mean, for you, you're you're obviously obsessed with what you do, right? I I love it. Obsession is a, a strong word, and I would I would agree with that. But uh, I do. I, I love what I do. I mean, it's to say that it doesn't feel like work. I mean, there's that cliche saying, you know, love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah hold some value. I'm sure I've said it in, in passing too before, but I mean, at the end of the day, there's no matter what you're doing, there is, there's work. It, it, it's yeah. work. You know, you gotta, you gotta show up and put in the hours and it, it takes a lot. Um, but having something you love definitely helps that situation and feels less like work. And you For know, sure. at the end of the day, you're typing numbers in an Excel sheet, uh, you're answering emails, you're picking up the phone and it's all your time. And that's, that's time and energy. And, and, um, it could be a lot sometimes. Um, and so tying that into, I guess, some of the other things we want to talk about of like challenges in the workplace and and things that we have come across in, in our years of, of business. Um, and we were talking a little bit about people, us loving what we do and passion and stuff. So what about um, employees and people that work for you or under you and their passion for the job? Or, you know, do you think it's true that everyone works for money? Are there people that truly love what they do or? Wow. Um, <laughs> I'm going to turn this one back to you in, 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 after, but you know, and the reason I say that for me, it's different. Like I, I, I have a running mate, you know, you're, you're, you're the, you're the lone, the lone, uh, the lone wolf here with your, your crew. So, um, your answers might be different than mine. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the people that are under me that I've dealt with, that I've managed, uh, I, I'll tell you right now, they're not there because they love the job. Some people do, but uh, that's another one of those those things that's cliche. Like, oh, don't, you know, find something you love and you won't. They're, they're not that it's not out there unless you're saving, you know, pets and mm -hmm. you know whatever. Um, work is work. If you like it, if you like it, it's better. If you're working with the right people and you have you're having fun, it's better. So that that's kind of what I've always tried to do is just maintain like a, a good atmosphere, a good environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, work hard, play hard, kind of thing. So, so what are you, what like what do you notice or what gives gives that away or maybe like how how did you even come to that conclusion that you know most of them like you said aren't aren't maybe there because they love it like what. What do you well, look for in them or from their reactions or their mannerisms? Yeah, or I whatever? mean, just body language, conversations. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're in different industries. You know, I, I, I run a sales engine. So, you know, sales is not easy. And 
So I don't, you know, I don't expect every day to be a walk in the park, but you know, there's a certain level of, you know, integrity that you need to come with every day. And if you don't bring that, you're not going to be successful in, in a sales world. Right. So that's what I was saying for you, it's a little bit different. You know, a lot of your guys are doing, you know, repetition, same, same thing every day. Mm-hmm. Um, how, I'll turn it to you. What, yeah. So we, I think, like you said, at the end of the day, does everyone love it? No. I mean, I look at like a lot of other people in our industry too, that, um, especially where we come from, which is more the DJ entertainment side for a lot of people that is a side hustle. Like for a majority of the companies, they still have nine to fives. They still work another job. Um, and they do this because they love it. Yeah. So to them, DJing a wedding, I'm seeing a wedding, whatever is, is their fun. And, um, taking it to our industry from the event side, I certainly see that passion in some people. And like you said, I see others that it it's a job. It's, it's a nine to five. You show up, you get paid, you do your job kind of thing and you leave. And so um, one of the biggest things for me now that I'm trying to understand and look out for across the workforce too, is like finding what is something that they do enjoy and love because it, it shouldn't all be behind you know computers doing numbers when we're in a field of creativity for our, our industry and so trying to find different ways to pull that creativity and pull people um out of maybe some of the more like rudimental work that has to get done and get them to have that creativity and do a little bit more with it um is cool and it's also a challenge because at the end of the day you still have numbers you have to meet you still have sales goals you have to meet just to pay bills and and you know keep moving as a business and so that's the the tricky part that um you know we're we're working through now as as a company um but i almost want to say that like i feel that anyone who really 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 loves what they do or one particular thing is going to pursue that all the way and they're going to take that and start their own business, start their own thing and and run with it. Um, which is fine. Right. And which is, you know, nine out of 10 industries that's that's possible to turn into a real business. Are there some things that I just feel can't be turned into a business to some extent? But then there's also the consulting end of like, you could love what you do, do it, never make a dime on it. But then teaching somebody else, you can make money from it, which is a cool um, cool side of it as well. Yeah. Agreed. So, I mean, what, what would you, uh, like advice for anybody listening that has their own business, how to keep people motivated, how to keep them engaged and, you know, committed to, to that person, that company. I have my little, uh, tricks, but again, sales related. So what what would, how do you keep these guys motivated and coming back every day? Like what you said is um, finding those ways to keep the workplace fun and and keep the morale up and stuff and is is interesting and something I'm trying to do more and more every day as the time goes on. You know, keeping a refrigerator stocked, keeping a snack counter stocked. You know, like those types of things only go so far. And so with some of our capabilities in house too. I mean, we just wrapped our bathroom to look like an aquarium and like just trying to keep things fresh <laughs> and interesting too. And that, you know, like I, I think they could all, everyone who's worked for me can attest that, you know, at, at some point every day they come in and, and something changes. We do something that, you know, whether it's as simple as repainting a wall or whatever, but I'm one to move quick too. Like if there's an idea for something, if we're not sure if it's going to work, not sure how it's going to play out, I'm all for like trying it. Let's, let's do it. Let's, you know, change that color. Let's rewrap the da- you know, the bathroom and make yeah. it look like something else. And so I'm all about kind of just keeping things interesting and, and doing different things like that. And so that's kind of the, the train that I'm on now, but I'm curious to hear, like you said, yours is more sales forward and, and that's not, that's not our industry as much, you know, like we're, we have people that come to us. And then we try and figure out if we're a good fit for them. And if we're not, that's fine, you know? Yeah. And so you're in the industry of like, probably you come to us and, or you go to them in most cases. Right. And, yeah. And you try and get that sale. Yeah. I mean, so for us, it's the normal, you know, the, the incentives, the cash incentives, the, the outings. Um, but you know, something that I've learned over my 
career is like cash, you know, bonuses, you know, spending the wood. That doesn't solve everything, you know. Um, really bringing like value as a leader. And I'm not perfect. I, I still got a lot of work to do, but I, you know, from, from where I was to now is night and day. I mean, a couple of people uh, listening would probably attest to that. But, um, yeah, it, it took me some time to realize, like, okay, you cannot win everybody over by paying them more or giving them, you know, an extra bonus. So, um <laughs> Yeah, it's, I just think it's it's different in, in every industry. You have to figure out how you can involve your employees in in the growth. And that doesn't always mean money. You know, it can mean a promotion. It can mean, uh, I don't know, but it, it can't always be fueled by a bonus by or money, a raise. Yeah. Um, that's just what I've seen. Yeah, I think... Um to me, like leadership and management and being a business owner is just so, so much of a psychology game. And I've said it a few times to people. I'm like, if I could go back to college, not sure if I want to go back to school, but if I were to take a class again, I would a hundred percent take psychology and I would look to, you know, read psychology books and whatever, um, in my free time, because I think it's such a, a game of, figuring out different people because like you said, it, it's not always that and it might not always or ever be that for one particular person. There could be a person that's, you know, happy as fuck making $20,000 a year. They don't care. But like yeah. buying them lunch every Friday makes their week and makes them want to not go anywhere else, you know? And then there could be the person sitting right next to them that's like, you know, if my salary doesn't go up X amount of dollars every year, I'm out kind of thing and I'm looking for something new. Like, and then you got, you know, somebody who, like you said, it might be the outings. It might be the like grabbing drinks or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, so trying to figure out those different avenues and learn who likes what and then find the balance of it and balance that out is um, the interesting part. But it's all it's all psychology to me. Yeah. Um, have you found like any, well, I think you and I spoke about this, like our first time at Prado. You have a young crew. Have you found any challenges with like, uh, I don't know, either complacency or like entitlement is that that's a big one for me. Entitlement. I don't think so. Um, we have a very, very humble crew, very young crew, but like, I think, I, I don't think entitlement, uh, at all, honestly, and challenges a hundred percent, like that's in every workplace. And so, um, that's the game to me too, that I enjoy. Like I enjoy those challenges and I enjoy the failures just as much as I do the successes. Um, because I walk away from everyone learning something. Um, now challenges, particularly with a young workforce or even myself being 23. I mean, when I started this company and as I was growing the company, I'm 18, 19, 20, trying to talk to these clients and, you know, book contracts and go to site visits and whatever. And so I learned very early on that, um, the biggest challenge was when people would initially see me their first, you know, instinct and people like that, you know, can't read a book by your cover, but like, I could just tell everyone was judging my book by my cover kind of yeah. thing. And it's like, you know, 18 year old kid, walking in to like do my wedding and I'm 28 getting married. Like, I don't want this kid at my party, you know, like yeah. I, that was definitely the initial mindset. Um, and even more so for corporate and for these jobs of like, what, what do they know? You know, he's 18, he's 19, whatever. And so I learned very early on that I had to, again, psychology almost, I had to like flip the way we were viewed as a company and I had to detach myself from the company, meaning it wasn't Brandon, 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 it was Red Max and yeah. you were reaching out to a company and it would stay very company forwards of like, I mean, I, I said to my office from day one, all of our emails were addressed, our website, everything was we, 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 yeah. always we, even when it was me and one other person, yeah. then when it was me and two other people, still we, it was always we and us. And, and the point behind that was so that we put out this 
you know, front of a company that was larger than what we were at the time. And because of that, we earned a lot of respect before they even actually met one of us. And so like now we can all confidently walk into a site visit, show up to a job and there's no hesitation or doubt that, you know, we're going to get the job done. Yeah. Um, but initially I could just see that every time I would walk in the door, I could just see that, you know, yeah. not fear in their eyes, but just like, oh no, like this isn't what I expected kind of thing. Like I've walked in to jobs or site visits after saying that, you know, I'm coming or the owner's coming, blah, 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 whatever. And I'd walk in and say I'm with Redmax and they're like, oh, like Brandon. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. And they're like, wow, we thought you were a lot older or, you know, a lot or whatever. And so that was, um, an interesting challenge to get past, but, um, but we, we made it and at least we're now like past that point. I feel yeah, comfortable. You, you built you know? your, uh, your relationship. So now it's, Hey Brandon. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, that, that's nuts. It's, it's awesome. I mean, I told you last time I, I very impressed with just the way you communicate and get in front of camera in front of people. I mean, JC Penny, it's, <laughs> it's a big deal. That was a cool, cool project, but, you know, back to the, the humbleness of our crew too. And I, I push that on all of them too. Just like same thing as failures versus successes too. I look at like everything we've done as we can always be better than ourselves. And I'm always looking more long-term for us and the company. And it's never about what we did yesterday, what we're doing now. Like no matter how cool something might be, right now there's so much cooler out there that we're striving for and trying to get that next thing and so it never like you know like when you say something like that to me it's like it was cool but then my mind immediately goes to like what else can we do like there's got to be so much more out there that's untapped that we can get to um and so that's kind of what I'm, I'm thinking about but working alongside some of those brands i was i was saying to some of the people in my office i was like we're showing up to this JC Penny job and there's three, four other vendors there and they're all, you know, guys that are probably in their forties to fifties. They've been doing this for years and they are, you know, they're established companies. They're like, they've, they've been through it and they're here for the same reason we are. And like that to me is very cool that like we are able to show up and participate in something of that caliber and that scale. So, ah, so, uh one of the uh, things I wanted to cover was, uh, do you think it's possible to work with friends and family? Uh, I'm not even sure. Do you have uh, friends or I, I guess? Do you have friends or family? <laughs> no, what, no I'm saying said. working <laughs> at, um, at Red Max. I was going to say, so what? to what extent do you mean um, working with? Is it, you know, are you talking partnering and from that standpoint? Or no, are you talking just... just Part, either, free labor paid labor like yeah no <laughs> what are you referencing <laughs> my no, family no 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 <laughs> no because we do the same my like, mom doesn't get paid my dad helps me all the time in the shop like he'll you know and he's happy with the plate of sushi like that's you know so um wow. and i it's interesting because that has been a a fun challenge in itself too of like bringing some family in here or there. I have a lot of family that is always like, if you ever need help, if you ever need help, if you ever need help. And to me, this is so much of a business for me that I just, I, I can't pull myself to do it, especially like I'm talking about employed. Like, yeah. You especially empl like on the books. Fam would, I don't, would not do I don't that? think I could do it. Maybe, uh, maybe a cousin or like an extended relative or Let's something. Say, if, if a cousin um, reached out to you and it's like, Hey, cause I need work. Yeah. I think I would, I think I would. Um, it would be tough. I, I don't know if I could do a full-time thing or do, you know, something of that caliber. Cause it's just, it's, it's interesting. It's like a different, totally different mindset from both ends. And, um, it's, it's tricky. There's just always going to be that, you know, situation too, or possible situation of like, if there is an issue in the workplace or something, an issue with another employee or whatever it might be, how do you deal with that conflict when it is family? And like, what if that goes on to affect Thanksgiving dinner or, you know, Christmas dinner or plans? And that's, that's a tough part to me. I want, I want business is business and family time is family time. And I don't also want to be at a family time event with those people. And they're talking about business cause they work for, yeah. you know, so that's how I feel about it. Yeah. I mean, it's a good perspective. I think 
if it doesn't exist now, I would encourage you to keep it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, not not totally in a bad way. I mean, I, I've been on, you know, both ends of it, it worked out and it hasn't worked out. I, I mean, my wife works with us. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, some people frowned upon that, but she made it easy because she, she busts her ass and she's really good at, at what she does. So, mm-hmm. um, in the beginning, you know, with, with the partners, that was kind of like, what are you doing? But that worked itself out. And then I have a bunch of friends there that, you know, I'm proud to, you know, that they reached out and that I'm able to help them. But it does get hairy sometimes when things aren't going so smooth and you have to have those tough conversations. Mm -hmm. Um, But overall, I I would say um, there's more good than bad. I guess it it all depends on how you deal with it. Um, So it's interesting. So do you find like, like if you guys go out to dinner or get home after work or whatever, it's like, is the conversation work? Because that's uh, what you guys both do. There's no like, how was your day? It's like, I know how your day was. I was with you. you yeah, I know. No. Well, <laughs> so no, the conversation is not work when we get home. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there are times where it's like, you know, I'm on the phone or I am asking about things. And it's like, all right, like we'll talk about it tomorrow. Um, but yeah, like I said, o- other than that, like overall, the people I've helped, like I, I've I have, uh, I feel good about that. Yeah. Yeah. Whether, whether they left after a certain amount of time or not, you know, when they were there, they did well, they learned things, you know, Mm -hmm. that's kind of ties back to what I, what I was saying before when you were talking about, you know, uh, certain people will come in, they love what they do. And if they really love it, one day they're going to figure out how to do it on their own. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. You know, I, I've gotten in front of 150 people and said, and you know, obviously I learned this, but, you know, if you come in here, you make a hundred grand year one, 120 year two, and, you know, 140 year three. And at that point you're like, all right, I'm going to do, I'm going to open up my hair salon or I'm going to do whatever. You know, that, that's, that's a, that's a success story for me. Mm-hmm. You know, have a, have a great time if you need anything let me know but right. that's a win for me um so yeah i i think you are able to make it work it just depends how you know who it is and what they're doing and i think the right operator will make a good judgment call on if right, it, right if it's a good fit or not interesting yeah i would go i would go against it because i've never been in that situation i guess so until i saw it work itself out for me, I would be against it. But I think I'll never see that because I'm against it now and I've got that mentality, Um, which I don't think is a bad thing either to, you know. It's not a bad. I found my wife. Yeah, (laughs) that's true. Just kidding. See, I like, I've had people involved in my life that want to be involved more with business and around things and whatever. And I try so hard to separate that out because I don't want that conversation to be dinner i don't want like you know i don't want that to carry past the the doors and i also like you know if they do one for thing for you even if they're helping out and then they come in the next week and that changed because xyz or you guys like we we move so quick as a company yeah and so like if you do one thing and someone doesn't like it and we change it or we move something or whatever and change it then you like have to deal with hurting their feelings and like you know those repercussions of that in a family friend aspect, you know, I've I've seen that with, uh, your good buddy, Mike, you know, I mean, that's an example of like, you know, what he's doing, how, you know, how my family members are helping him. Like that shit gets tough sometimes. (laughs) Like there's a lot of tough love with that, but I I guess it's different. Um, but yeah, it's, it's tricky working with, friends and family, even, even on a business level though, too, even if you are fully in it on a business level and you become, so that's actually a whole nother topic of this too. But what about going into something on a business level and then becoming friends with somebody? 
Yes, yeah, like, so I'm, I'm on that end of the stick as well. I mean, uh, I don't, I don't want to go too far down a rabbit hole, but you know, the 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 uh, the kid that let me invest and brought mm-hmm. me in, you know, we we went to high school together, but we we weren't tight in high school, and you know, over the last seven years, like I consider him a brother, so it's like. In that scenario, like, yeah, shit is tough sometimes. Like, you want to fucking kill each other, but we have that type of relationship where we have an argument and, you know, it's forgotten about the uh, the next day. Mm-hmm. And we, As you we say, move what, on trumps, and, what trumps what? Like, at the end of the day, is it business or friendship to you? In what regard? Like, what what would I pick? What do you mean? Like, if it comes down to it in a situation and and there is just, say, so much disagreement there... What what wins over that disagreement? Is it pure business, numbers, facts, and everything, or friendship? And how do we make this work? Are you for him or for me? Not even in that. Just mentally speaking, if if you know you were in that situation with it could be it's, someone else. Like what well, what does win? That's in that a good. It's a you, good question. You know? So I'll, I guess I'll give you like both perspectives. I, for me, I, I always try to find the middle ground because I you know I'm sensitive to other people's feelings. Not that he's not, but um, I would try to find a middle ground as to where, you know, and, and he's taught me this over the years where it's like, no, it's bi- the business always comes first. And, uh, I, you know, if we're talking about doing, doing things by the book, yeah, the business comes first and mm-hmm. everything else second. But, um, I, I think there's a way to find a middle ground where everybody's happy. Right. Right. But, and we do, we do do that. Interesting. All right, let's BS let's a little get into bit. Into the BS, <laughs> talking about uh, this was this was one that I, I thought was interesting. I don't know why I was thinking about this. <laughs> what I said, I need to drink more for this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, why is this a, a soft subject? No, I wouldn't say soft. That's a hard. Tough. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> um, I. My, th- this, this is, is coffee, one of the top. By the way. What? This is coffee, by the way. It is? Yeah. Straight coffee for the viewers. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it is good. With I'm, milk and sugar. I'm actually starting to vibrate a little bit. I'm getting a little woozy. <laughs> it's smooth. I'm going right to Prado after this. Oof. Don't um, tell me with a good time. <laughs> so, is it possible to date a girl that your friend has had sexual relations with in the past? Mm. So I think, is it possible for me? No, I couldn't do it. If I knew about it. So obviously you, you would need to know <laughs> about it. <laughs> well, not necessarily. You don't. You don't need to know about it. Well, you wouldn't have to make the decision on the, if you want to be with that person. If well, you correct. Know yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if that's the question, I think the answer is still you, no. You for knew me. about it and you really liked her and there was a potential for something long term. I think there would have to be a lot of underlying factors that would have to come into play of timeline and, you know, such for me um, to make that decision. But, and who that person is in, relationship to me as well like you know yeah. do i work with them every day do i see them every day are they close friends are they you know almost family are they like what what is that relationship um but i think for the most part i would push myself to to being no you know i think we're in agreement there yeah i i mean so there's a difference between like did they kiss make out or whatever but if, if if they were having sex like uh there's no chance that yeah you know, anything long term right right so i mean when i was younger that was all around me oh you, you hooked up with this one you like and there was no avoiding it but as you get older like i don't know i can't see you know introducing somebody to my parents that you know maybe i thought could be long term mm-hmm Knowing that my boy that I hang out with was <laughs> <laughs> sorry, not happening. Um, 
anyway, it was a, that was a BS and topic of mine. I, I just, I'm curious because it came up in a conversation with somebody else and their view on it was like, it happened 10 years ago. Who cares? I'm like, that's kind of like the timeline thing for me. Like, you know, you, you tell me you 10, can't 15 unsee years ago. Shit. Like, I don't care what anybody says. That shit, is, any, any kind of experience like that is always back here. Maybe you're not thinking about it all day long, but you see that person and you, rem- you remember. And if, you're, if your boy is next to them, it's like. Yeah. Nah, not, no for me, dog. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> I would agree. Well, uh, I think we're in agreement there. Yeah. What's your uh, BS and topic this week? Mine was um, if you could have dinner with with any anybody, celebrity, famous person, obviously it's likely going to be the route we'd go with this conversation. But if you could have dinner with anybody, um, who would it be? And totally detached from business, just someone you would love to sit down with, have some food and drink over and, and talk about something. Dead or alive? Anyone. Um, damn, that's a tough one. I don't know. I... I don't know. I gotta think about that one. I, I would say an athlete. I, I, it would be an athlete. Who? I don't know. Maybe a soccer player or, or an NBA guy. And only for the reason of... I'd, I'd want to know, like, does that life ever get tired? You know, are they mm-hmm. tired of that life of, like, they ever go to bed and, like, fuck, I, w- I want to live a normal life. I want to be able to go outside and not have pictures taken of me. Uh, this also came up with somebody and was like, I I don't give, uh, if I was making that kind of money, I wouldn't give a shit if, uh, oh, but, oh, the Selena Gomez shit came up. Oh, yeah. Uh, we don't need to get into that, but uh, the conversation was like, oh, if I was making that kind of money, people could bully me that I don't know. I won't look at it. And, you know, uh, people want to take pictures, let them, you know, this is the life they chose. And I could kind of play devil's advocate with it. You know, I I have a softy as as much of a an asshole I am. I have a uh, I have a heart, and <clears throat> I see it all the time. Like on on even on Instagram, just like people bad mouthing and bashing these people. You know these celebrities, and like they have to see it. They're they're like me and you, bro. They go to bed, they check. And it's just not right. You know, it, for especially for the wrong reasons. So anyway, that that's what I would I I would pick either you know an NBA player or you know a, a soccer superstar and just ask like, you ever tired of it? You would you would you rather be a normal person if you could start over and, and not have the hundreds of millions and be able to do go you know, go to the mall, go to the movies without mm-hmm. having to wear a hood and a hat? But it's a good question. I, yes. I needed to prepare for that one, but. Yeah, no, I, you know, I wrote it down earlier this afternoon and I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, I, I need more time than this to really prepare and come up with an answer. But um, I think me not being from the sports end of, uh, of things in the world, for me, it's a it's a business person. So it's someone who's made it in business, but also made it in their personal life. Um, and I would I would honestly take anyone who has successfully put more into their family and their personal life while still operating an extremely successful company for the pure reason of being able to talk to them and be like, how did you do it? Like, what are some, you know, it obviously wasn't all smooth sailing. So like what, what went wrong and what did you do to, to fix that and correct that? Um, but I was thinking more, you know, to put an actual name on it, um, this might even flag our podcast, so I apologize. But to put an actual name on it, I would love to sit down with Trump and have dinner with him. And oh, you get to get a lot of shit for that. Oh yeah, I know, I know. But to back myself up, I would do it with any uh, any president, like any past president. I think would be awesome to sit down with. Um, similar to the fact that you said of like their their life is so so different. Like you are now stuck with Secret Service. Like you are like that's that's your life, you know, and like being followed around like that for the years of your term too. Do you ever think about like this sucks? Like I want to be able to just go out and like I mean, yeah, like it's nice when people shop for you and people do everything for you, but at the same time, like that's gotta get old, you know? Yeah. Uh Trump, huh? 
<laughs> I, I would. I, from a business standpoint, I you know I think it, it would be curious. I would be curious to hear, especially just him going through what he went through with the amount of backlash. Scrutiny, but every yeah. every president gets it too. Like every president, there's you know whatever the Not percentage as bad is. As he though. does though. It's true, but you know, there's still that that percentage that is always going to be for either side, and and so hearing his perspective of what he went through and and how he dealt with it would be interesting to me. So that's good. You think it's possible to? I, I just sit saw down with like, Trump. No, <laughs> no, no. I just saw like uh, I think it was Reese Witherspoon and her husband got divorced. Divorce rate is at, at at its highest these days. You think a lot of that is contributed to just the lifestyle they live, the money they're making, and just the people around them. I mean, he, uh, talking about the divorce rate that that's outside of wealthy and mm-hmm. famous and what have you. But I, I just feel like in that world, it's even more difficult. But, yeah, I don't. I, that's that's what comes down to like the first you know, my original answer of like, I would love to sit down with someone who's made it and is, you know, successful in their eyes of family and business, because I feel like most business owners at one point choose one or the other. And like, for the same reason I was asking you before, I'm like, what, what trumps in that friendship? Is it business or is it friendship? And so those who at the end of the day have, you know, been able to find that balance of both, but also chosen family to avoid divorce and avoid things like that too because it's it's tough like you're gonna have you know no matter what business it is you're gonna have those times where you have to the business calls and you got to go to it you know um and it might be at a time that you know he or she doesn't want that and so like finding that balance to me is is interesting but um and that that coupled with this thing the phone social media is just cancer man cancer uh, people are living fake lives, destroying the minds of other people. Like, you know, and I think that kind of contributes and ties back to employees and employee retention, you know, entitlement. And I'm not by any means talking bad about any of my people. I love them all. Um, but there's, there is, I think it's in, in every industry, just a sense of entitlement, you know, COVID sent everybody home. Um, and now, now people think, you know, work from home is normal. It's, it's not, I mean, mm-hmm. for some people it works, you know, some organizations it works for some it doesn't. And, uh, anyway, kind of, kind of salad bowling everything here, but social media in this day and age, you know, again, people just have the wrong idea of like what it's supposed to be. It's like, well, it's like the blue, the blue check mark, you know, yeah. the amount of people with a blue check mark. 60,000 plus followers and then you go to one of their posts and they've got 45, 48 likes. Yeah. They're it's buying like, that Where shit. are the other 60,000 people? Not even that, bro. They're just like posting the, the Gucci, the Louis. Like not... Right. None the, of that yeah. shit, man. Uh, for anybody listening that like so consumed with, with that, like none of that shit matters. I mean, it's funny because I, I look at this from the other side of it of like using... <sighs> almost I want to say like using how easy it is to trick someone or put on that front to a pure business advantage too of like anyone who follows me thinks all I do is work 24 <laughs> seven swear to God. And like, that's, that's my goal with it. Like is to just look so obsessed with what I do and that we are always, I mean, like I will pull like, here's a secret, like, you know, anyone, who watches our stuff like I will pull from old content and post at eight o'clock at night. I will. Yeah. I'll pull from old content and post on a weekend that we don't have anything going on, but that's that's like the game. And so putting on that, that front I've used to my advantage. Obviously there's a lot of it with the Gucci bags and all that other stuff that like is not, um, and doesn't, doesn't even get you anywhere. Like it's not getting you, you know, anything. So, um, it's an interesting topic. We might have to expand on that in the next episode. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll probably circle back to that topic, but, uh, for any, uh, young listeners out there, fake it till you make it. That's, <laughs> that's what I used to say. That's what, that's sure. what I was told. And I did it. I mean, cause it, it, none of it matters. You get a nice watch. People are like, Oh, wow. 
you know, for the first couple of times they see you and then they forget about it. They go on with their day. Meanwhile, you don't even like the fucking thing. Yep. I, I had it's an that experience with that. Money can't buy happiness too. Yeah. I, Couldn't that, be truer. I learned that the hard way, but it is true. Um, cool. You want to wrap this up? Yeah, it was a good episode. We'll, uh, we got to a little more. Coffee's good. A little more BS. Good coffee. Nighttime. I could, I could rock with this. <laughs> um, I do want to incorporate, you know, into our segments, just like a small business shout out. That's something that's important to me. I've always, you know, you, I don't know where I got it from, but I've always been the kind to like support small businesses. And, mm-hmm. um, I don't know what the reason is, but that's just what I've done. So at the end of every episode, I think we'll incorporate just shouting out a couple of, uh, I don't know if you have any family members that have businesses or restaurants, whatever. Um, but I do, and, uh, we could wrap up that way. Sure. Yeah. Go for it. First one for me is, uh, La Parma too. Best Italian food in town. Uh, Jericho Turnpike Huntington. Check it out if you haven't already. Ask for Vincent. (laughs) Uh, you got any, uh, favorite restaurants you want to shout out? Restaurants. Oof. What's your, what's your go-to, uh, pizzeria? Don't don't name anything around. Go to pizza is Mario's, uh, Mario's? on Markfields, yeah, in East Northport. Um, I know the owners very well. We've done a bunch of work with them through the high school and, and the other places like that. So we've uh, we've always just worked closely with them and and helped them out. But um, I love Mario's by us. I've tried other pizza places. It's just not the same. You've been to La Parma or no? I haven't. No. You go but check I it might out. Have to. <laughs> you might have to check out Mario's too. So uh, I I I've been there. I get yeah. the buffalo slice. The buffalo slice. I'm a grandma vodka guy. The best slice they have. Oh, I thought you meant like show up with the other pizza. <laughs> we just start the next episode like eating. I got to stop drinking slice. this. I don't even know what he just said. <laughs> it's fucking smooth. It, it is. Um, and it's getting me woozy. But uh, on to the next episode. Yes, sir. That's it. See you guys next time. Yeah, my foot's asleep. Are you kidding? Drunk. <laughs> <laughs>